Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about why I chose RPG Maker MV Game Engine for my next indie game project. Before I do though, and since this is my first video on this new channel, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is Neil and I've been working in technology for almost two decades as a software engineer slash coder. More recently, within the last five years, I stopped coding and began working as a technology director. This means I manage other coders and architect our system, or as sometimes I like to refer to it, professional babysitting. I started doing a little game development as a side hobby about four or five years ago, mainly because my daily paid babysitting duties pulled me away from being able to write actual code anymore, which I actually quite enjoy, and because I needed to keep my coding skills sharp, so at work at least I still sounded to other coders like I knew what I was talking about. My first attempt at game dev resulted in a little game called Beat Blocker written in C++ using the Marmalade game engine. It was inspired by the popular game Super Hexagon. I don't have pictures to show of this awesome game, but I do have the old asset sprite sheet lying around, so I'll show you that, and also a picture indicating how many copies I was able to sell in the Apple App Store once I finally released it. Anyway, after the remarkable success of that first game and the accomplishment of having completed an item on my personal bucket list, I took it easy and vowed never to make another game again. It's hard to top that kind of success twice. After all, I made a game, it was hard, it took a lot of my time and nobody played it. So about a year later I decided to make another game. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it was out of determination to make a game that was played by more people than I could count on the two hands that I possess, or maybe it was boredom. Honestly, it was probably just amnesia and after a year had passed and I had forgotten all the torture involved, my brain said to me, hey, remember that awesome game we made? Let's do that again. Only better. Anyway, my second game was directly inspired by the hit mobile game Reigns, which was really just a swipe left and right game. Kind of like Tinder for gamers, but without the hassle of having to eventually meet and talk to real people, which we all know coders aren't specialists at. My idea was to make a football manager variant of the game with some new mechanics. As a fan of the football since I was a kid, by the way, I'm talking about the game Soccer for all of you Americans watching who prefer to call it by a different name than the rest of the world in favour of reserving that term for the game that we all prefer to call Hand Egg. I realised by choosing football that I was limiting my potential audience for release, but hey, I figured nothing was going to top the blistering success of my first game anyway, so it didn't really matter and I read somewhere that it's best to make things based on stuff you actually know and enjoy, so a football game it was. About another year later the game was made, and like before it took twice as long as I thought that it would take, but by now I was beginning to realise that that seems to be par for the course with any kind of indie game development. I released the game for mobile, and in all seriousness it did in fact fare better than my first game, but again, I will save the story of that for a future episode and move straight on to my next game, which is the game I just started making this year, and is under current development. The game idea was inspired by one of my kid's favourite books when she was four years old, I Want My Hat Back. It truly is an excellent literary work, and I recommend it for all aspiring authors. I thought it would be fun to change the word hat for beard in my head, and from this, the idea was born of a game in which the main character's beard is stolen and you have to puzzle out the mystery by walking around, talking to people, solving puzzles, and so on. Using my narrative engine I made for the Football Manager game, I plan to just make it another left-right swipe masterpiece, and then within two weeks, gave up. It was too hard to make a complex multipath story in this format. So I said, basically screw it, and I went back to training for my opportunity to break into professional Rocket League. Randomly googling around a few months later, I ran into RPG Maker, an engine that has apparently been around for years, which allows you to make old-style, top-down RPG games pretty easily. I immediately saw the potential for making my beard story in this engine. Since all of this is a hobby and a distraction from me having to properly raise my children, and since therefore time is truly a limiting factor between that, my paid babysitting dude is at work, and my Rocket League habit, I just knew I needed an engine that could help me make a game quickly and with as little coding as actually possible. An RPG maker looked like it could fit that requirement. It's all written in JavaScript and allows you to put together graphical tile sets and you can have little 1995 16-bit quality character sprites running around the screen in 5-10 to 10 minutes. So I dropped $80 of my babysitting money on Steam for the software and jumped straight into making my hilarious story about beards and my pet dog, which I proudly named Who Stole My Beard. 
Fast forward a few weeks and not only was RPG Maker now on Steam sale for only $20, meaning I wasted $60 to launch this new enterprise, but I was also realizing that making this game turn out to be actually any good was going to pose a much larger number of challenges than I had originally suspected. Unsurprisingly, I had missed the gold rush of using a 15 year old engine and all of the free assets that it provides to pump games into the App Store and make millions. And it seemed from reading the online forums that people had already wisened up to buying any old trash just because they owned an iPhone. So although it has taken me a long time to get to the point, I'm going to summarize the pros and cons that I have found using the RPG Maker engine after six months of experience so far. I will give three pros and three cons that have been most relevant to me and the project that I'm working on. So starting with the pros, number one, it's good enough. Though not necessarily the most exciting sounding endorsement to top the pros list, in the end, after six months of working on the engine, I have come to the conclusion that RPG Maker is just about good enough to make the game that I want to make. In the end, this is the most important point from my own entirely selfish point of view and is therefore a testament to the engine as a whole. Plus, if I can make games from it, and I'm sure many of you out there can probably make your game from it too. It handles the basics well enough so that you don't have to. Moving the camera, moving the player, handling the input and so on. The builder software is pretty intuitive and it's easy to use to get up and running pretty quickly. Number two, community. There is an active and helpful community of folks making games and a plethora of forums, tutorials and code examples to help with 95% of anything that you're stuck on or decided that you need for your game. Honestly, without this kind of free support, I would never have been able to continue with the project. So I would say this is a pretty indispensable aspect of making a game in this engine. Number three, plugins. Hard to say if this is really a pro or a con, but in the end, I have to put it as a pro because without it, as with the community stuff, I would never continue making a game in the engine. Basically, the default engine is lacking some pretty basic features but you can get those features usually for free in the form of easily downloadable and easily installed third-party plugins. Cons. Single purpose. Although there are indeed a few complete games out there that buck the trend, in general this engine is going to make one main type of game. Retro RPG looking games where little people walk around villages and trees talking to unbelievable NPCs and telling bad jokes with a turn-based battle view system thrown in for good measure to break the monotony and delay the actual plotline for long enough so that you feel like you actually accomplished something and got your money's worth. Number two, indie disdain. I should also point out that during the discovery of RPG Maker, I quickly came to learn that there is quite a lot of animosity within the gamer community towards games made in the engine. Number three, default quality. At first I wanted to believe that this tool would allow me to make the games that I had in mind, and while ultimately I do believe that it will, doing so would definitely require learning the engine in some depth, writing some non-trivial code additions, and generally knowing far more about the underlying engine than I ever really wanted to. And again, as I said before, with the main engine, if there's anything that you want to do that is slightly specific, like say, click your mouse on an item, then this is going to require usage of a custom plugin or even worse, custom coding. Fortunately, plugins are in ready supply since the community has been around for a long time, but there is still the work and effort involved in finding them and then learning to actually use them. I think to conclude for my purposes, RPG Maker is sufficient for the type of game I am building, a narrative adventure type game. Obviously, if I was making a more graphically intense game with lots of animations and greater performance, and customization needs then an engine like unity would be much more suitable please click subscribe if you like the channel and join me on twitch.tv where i'm regularly doing indie game development and game playthroughs you can also check out my previous games and current development efforts on my website over at clear.games.com